All right, what's up you guys? Ziza Connection, we are on Tidy's Facebook page live right now with him talking. Who authorized that? I thought it was you, but I'm not sure. I don't remember it. Yeah, well- I plead the fifth, is that the thing you can do in America? You can plead the fifth, it just means like, you're not getting an answer. Right, it means like I'm not, I, I choose not to talk. So for this whole interview- You can plead the fifth. I can plead the fifth. Right. All right. It'll be an interesting interview. We're right? on, we're on baby. <laughs> so, how are you? Oh, I'm stressed, man. Really? Legit. Why? What is stress? What's What's the first thing that comes to mind? Why are you stressed? Well, honestly, mm -hmm. being a, an artist mm -hmm. means that you have to, like, you start up making music and you do it for love the music. And you still do that. But these days, people care about the brand just as much as the music and it's getting scarily close to the point where people care more about branding than they do about the actual music. It used to be like, I could just drop a track and if it was a cool track, people would like it. Now I'm like, will this interview suck? Will like people on my Facebook page right now think that I'm a terrible, like, like what? Am going, I off brand right yeah, now? Yeah, the rules have changed. Like who am I, a house artist, a trance artist? No, I'm just a dude who makes music, so I'm stressed. And so, also this year doesn't help because I can't tour. So right. I've got no validation. Right. Can't see a crowd. Right. So are you more stressed about the fact that you don't feel like you have your sound yet? That's a, actually fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I think I've definitely found my sound, but the thing is, it's kind of a mis, I guess a mischaracterization in the sense that like finding your sound right. is almost boxing you in. Okay. Like, hey dude, have you imagine you're a painter. Let me flip this on you, dude. Imagine you're a painter. Mm -hmm. And I go, have you found your style? Right. And you're currently painting beaches. You might go, yeah, but like, how long do you want to paint beaches for before you want to start painting roses or change the picture, man? So it's a trick question. So no, I will never find my sound. And that's the honest truth. All these artists out there will say, yeah, like I've got this sound and it's so unique because of this. Not a good idea. Don't ever do that because you box yourself in and then you can't do anything else. And then you're a prisoner of your style. So. Then you don't have the opportunity to expand and create however you want to. You feel like you're stuck yeah, within that. Man. So on the flip side mm -hmm. is that I start with the song and the lyrics and the story and then I decide how to produce the track and if it's going to be like i don't care if it ends up dubstep i don't care if it ends up trance or house or whatever genre the gen z's want to call it man i don't care and my manager's probably going to keep my ass for saying this because <laughs> like branding is a really important thing but right. to answer your first question yeah i'm stressed because i have so much trouble adhering to this idea that i have to go i'm a tech house producer and i'm the best at tech house ridiculous. Right. I can't ever do that. Why well, can I be the best at any genre? I just try my best with any song I like and I, and I float around, baby. Well, like you said, you start with the story. So you're going to find the best way to portray the story, not the best way to portray a certain song or a certain yeah. sound. You mm -hmm. want to make sure the story is what's being told. Yeah. The music leads the song, like the, the production leads the songwriting. Right. It shouldn't be the other way around. It shouldn't be like, I'm making a house track. Therefore, I'm going to need a house vocalist. Already put walls up, baby. Right. Wall, 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 wall. Right. House song needs house vocalist. You trapped yourself, sorry. You played yourself. Right. Don't do that, Gary. I'm going to write the sickest song that I feel like writing that day. Right. And it could be about anything you want. Like the other day, I wrote this song with Bella, who's a great friend of mine, and we have a song called New Normal. Right. And we had the concept and the idea, and it's like, if somehow that song calls for a different style of production, I'd go there. Like, it's not like this has to be this sound. But, sorry if I'm talking here. You're, you're not at all. Go ahead. The, but the problem is with that, is that it does dilute my brand. So I'm stressed, bro. So, okay, well, let's switch <laughs> gears then. Let's switch gears. What are you doing to deal with that stress, if anything? Oh, Outside of... I'm admitting it. Okay, that's fair. I'm I'm making it public. Okay. So and live. Because yeah, and live. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, what's up? Um and live because 
I guess what like what what are your options? Option A, follow the rules. Okay. Brand yourself and say, I am this guy and I am I only make this, you know, the best of it. Or option B, be very like write whatever you want and enjoy the like like live in writing those songs and whatever style it turns out to be, enjoy it. But then at least like you know, that, that is a tough situation, but at least say to everyone, I'm really sorry if you didn't like my last, like, I know you came to a bunch of my trans shows, or I know that you came to a bunch of my house shows. That's the tidy that you know and you were looking I'm to hear. I'm yeah. sorry my next song pissed you off. <laughs> um, and I can't help that. And right. so admitting it, I think, is making me feel like... <sighs> just a little relief. Yeah, it was yeah. just a therapy there. Yeah. Just chill out. <laughs> yeah. So when did you start noticing that you were stressed out about this? Or has it oh, been an ongoing thing? I think I've always been stressed. Right. It's like, I think it started to become, when it became a business. So, Interesting. Yeah. Because when you're young and dumb and just passionate, you don't think about bread. You, well, maybe some kids do, I don't know. But right. I, I didn't. I just wanted to make cool tracks. Mm -hmm. They happened to do well. And next minute I find myself in Amsterdam playing to 20,000 people. Right. And then everyone's like, oh, he's the coolest trans DJ. But then I was like, I'm, I want to drop a different track now. I did it. And all the trans fans were like, what? He sold out. It's like, dudes, I didn't sell out. I never established the point that I, from the beginning. You're like, just because I made some really good like, trans songs. And I keep, yeah. And I keep getting people saying to me, Hey, Tidy, like make another You Walk Away, which is like an old trance classic that I had. Or like or make another Redefined, which right. was a, a big one. Right. And my answer is always, I already made it. <laughs> Why would I do it again? Like, come on. You know, do you want me to do the same thing over and over? Or do you want me to try something different and maybe surprise you guys? Like, come on. You know, you know what's Think funny? One of my Obvious. favorite albums of all time is the Blueprint 3 from Jay-Z. And yeah. in the album, he says, people want my old shit, then buy my old albums. Yeah. So it's like very similar thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If you want the old music, if you want an old the, the style that I was making at the time when I was passionate buy about the it, album. buy the album, listen to that music. Yeah, let me divert you back to when I did it. Right, yeah. right. Sorry if I came off the cuff just a bit stressed out. That's what we wanted, wasn't it? Come yeah, in I mean, here and, and talk about some real shit. It's a lot better than it's a lot better than so how'd you get your start? What what inspires you? Like I mean actually that would be a cool question, but We've already gone there though. Yeah, let, Our previous episode seventeen on Ziza Brand, Ziza Connection, YouTube, whatever. Episode seventeen is where we talk about everything tidy, everything about your story, your past, you know, where how you came to be who you are. And this is much more like what's going on in your life right now. What is Tidy going through right now? Yeah, he's freaking out, man. <laughs> Play the fifth. <laughs> your new song is doing well, though. Yeah. And people are loving it. It dropped today. Shameless plug. Uh, Naz Tokyo is the okay. singer. She has 110 million streams on one of her songs. She's Grammy nominated. And I am so lucky that she's a nice person because she, <laughs> she, wanted, she wanted to work with me. And it dropped today and it's doing really well. So yeah. It's called Way Too Loud. Okay. And it's about, so when I got in the room with Naz, we were like, like I do with every session, I just try to write stuff that I care about. And I just went, dude, do you put on like the news every day and just freak out? Like it's just people like you put on CNN and then you put on Fox and like they're fighting. It's like, oh, this guy's wrong. This person's is wrong. It's a riot. It's a T for it's, and it's like, and like I'm, I'm not going to put out any kind of political thing, right? right. But it's, the point is, it's just too loud. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, give me a break, man. Like, yeah. I can't put on the TV 100%. without shit freaking me out. So, we wrote the song called "Way Too Loud," and pretty much the main line is, "Please shut up." <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, but it's a beautiful song, and Naz killed it. And she, so it's done. I haven't listened to it yet. It's out. It's been out for 24 hours. You haven't listened. Yeah, we were, we were all over here partying last night. I quit. We all know you love to party. <laughs> I, do I? I? I would assume you do. I, it I seems would, like you do. Define party. Well, let's talk about that. What is a party? You tell me. I would think a party. Well, let's let, let me ask this question. It, do you. Can you be productive during a party? 
depends how hard you party. Touche. Touche. Because I would and, say we were pretty productive last night. We had some really like productive conversations. Don't all. You guys me, made music. This is live. Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm you're talking about. Fifth. You guys worked on music. You, you told me I can bleed the fifth anytime I want. So I'm just going <laughs> to just do that every time. Uh, I think that if you're pottying, you can be productive. But if the objective is to potty, don't expect something productive. If the objective is, <laughs> the objective is to be productive and it turns into a potty, hell yeah. That's You're like matter. best of both worlds. But don't try to expect a good result from a party. Okay. You set it up like a party. So when does it become a party? What's the what's the defining factor where it's now a party? Probably when you absolutely naked, rolling down a hill, scre <laughs> screaming, I rule the world, and like just launching fireworks from your hands. See, I don't think I've ever partied then. Because I don't think I've ever gone that's, there. That's a party, man. That's you, a party. You've never done that? I've never done but that. You should try it sick. I'll give it a shot maybe later today so once we good. wrap all this up. Yeah. Yeah. I got, so, a, I got a good hookup for fireworks if you need it. I, aren't they illegal in California? That's Cal my friend that went off texting me saying <laughs> About the fireworks? It's probably someone saying, this conversation sucks. <laughs> this guy sucks. <laughs> so, um, I've run out of water. Can someone please help with water? Water? Do we need pineapple? No. Just, no? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Pineapple would be great. Pineapple means vodka. <laughs> way to ruin it <laughs> dude we had a deal i thought we were gonna, gonna be honest dude, here you know what we're gonna do instead of instead of this being a therapy session okay we're going at it let's go at it so what makes you such a good interviewer uh i wouldn't say i'm the best interviewer yet but i'm yet? progressing every time so i go you about plan it to be? plan to be Are you looking, do you look up to seth rogan no 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 this is Dan. joe rogan yeah same shit i in certain ways in other ways i don't what do you think about Joe Rogan's uh, $100 million Spotify deal? I think that's, it's yesterday, right? We were talking about how the employees no, at Spotify. <laughs> I don't remember the, anything. Please the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, even though you, did, you didn't see me yesterday. No, I didn't see um, The employees at Spotify, <laughs> the employees at Spotify are getting yeah. mad at Spotify for not censoring Joe oh, Rogan. Oh, yeah, that's, okay, I did see him yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, only because I want to talk about this. Yeah. So we're talking about censorship. Yep. What do you? What's your position on censorship? I don't think I, I'm a big freedom of speech guy. I Me agree too. that freedom. I agree that uh, like everyone should be able to say whatever they want, whether it's offensive or not, because you can't. You have to risk being offensive to be honest you in your conversation. To, it's, so it's the dissidents that change the world. Look at. Um, Actually, something that broke my heart recently mm -hmm. is um, the loss of uh, RBG. Okay. That broke my heart because she was such a role model to me in the sense of like what she went through to get to her position and change America. And I'm Australian, so I can't vote, guys. So like, right. So if anyone's going to comment on this and be like, I don't really care. I can't vote. So my opinion doesn't matter. I'm just speaking freely here. RBG rocked. She like was for equality and just for like, like everything she said was eloquent and beautiful. And even when she lost in the Supreme Court, she was, her, her dissents changed future decisions. Yeah. And that was badass. Her precedence, absolutely. And she is now, there will be books for, for years that will change the game. 100%. Yeah. Like she's, so I guess my, my point is. Um, with the censorship of Joe With Rogan. the censorship. If you apply censorship, to like, let me, let me preface it with this. No one should have hate speech. No one should be rude. No one should say things that could create violent actions. Right. But if you do happen to put a sensor on something like that, or you say, oh, if you say this word is bad, then you're setting a marker, you're setting a goalpost. And the scary bit about that is that everyone adjusts to it. And then the next offensive thing becomes the line keeps moving and that's setting those precedents every time. So it's a, it's a weird thing to talk about, but the point is that in order to have a free society where everyone's happy, mm -hmm. you have to allow certain idiots to say whatever they want. You, you have to. Yeah. And, and as much as dumb as it is, and as much as you're like, Oh, I can't believe you said that you have to allow it yeah. because if you censor them, 
and like you're setting yourself up for really limiting. shitty house though. Yeah, and <laughs> limiting pe- what people can say is just the worst way to get genuine answers out of people. You know what I mean? Like if I ask you a question, I want to know what you actually think about what I'm asking you about, not like what you can think. <laughs> I don't want to know what you think within the censored rules of you know, of the society you live in. I want to know what you genuinely think, whether I like it or not, whether it's offensive to me yeah. or not. You know what I mean? Imagine a world in which censorship was so intense that we couldn't even have this conversation. Right. If, imagine if you and I, I, I feel like we agree on almost everything. For the most part, yeah. But what's the bit you disagree on? No, I'm so far, I would assume we agree on almost everything. Gotta be somewhere we disagree on something. Let's find that and then just, just, just go to town. (laughs) No, so I, I think like imagine a world in which we couldn't even have civil discourse. Right. We couldn't even have an intellectual conversation because of censorship. That's a scary place to be. So I would rather a world in which people can say, I don't want them to say dangerous ideas. They're lunatics and should be reported, but you can't censor speech right and somehow we went from music to here right through joe rogan and, and, i guess and, and, all and, conversations and started god, with joe. god bless rbg yeah can we yeah. just like mention that she ruled like yeah. what a what an amazing person her passing was really recent and really random so it was yeah like and just if you don't know who she is look it up because she changed the game yeah she's a badass and she was a badass to the end <laughs> and i i love my mom but i would consider rbg like just as cool and you're you're how old are you 30 46 today 46 today yeah okay we're gonna just roll with 46 turned, just turned 46 <laughs> happy birthday thanks man <laughs> you're welcome Dude, what, what kind of cake do you like what's your favorite kind of cake i hate cake you hate cake yeah cake, are you an ice cream guy cake is a waste of time okay do you know why why because it's just this like spongy waste of time and all you're in it for is the icing. You, you like. I, I don't, hey, you're pushing hey, it. We're gonna disagree there. Hey, cake lovers, admit it. You're in it for the icing. The rest is just. <laughs> a- it says happy birthday on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thank you, Halen. <laughs> hey, so so cake cake lovers, admit it. You're in it for the icing. That's it. You're, I disagree. The rest is sponge. It's just a gap filler. It's kind of like, hey, let's bring this to music. Okay. To me, cake mm-hmm. is like a basic tech house track. The sponge is the bit where they take away the bass line and they leave they leave you with the right. and you're just waiting for it again. <laughs> and when and, and it finally it gets there and some stupid line gets said like bring it up now. And then it goes <laughs> and okay. everyone's like, oh yeah, that's the icing. You That's listen, when you're getting your Hey, eyes, babies, eh? you just listened to Sponge the whole time. Look. And I hope you enjoyed two minutes of Sponge. Here's the icing. I just think the sponge is is valuable, too. The sponge is good, too. Like, the, 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 well, the spongy cake, I if see, done correctly. I see your point, actually, because without the sponge. There is no icing. You would you're otherwise, yeah, you, just, you, you won that. Good there work. you go. You just changed my mind. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good work. So that's rare. Last time, last time we talked, did you just logic me out? <laughs> last time we talked, we cake, talked cake about talks. wanting to talk about aliens. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, let's talk about aliens. Let's talk about aliens. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about aliens. You're a pilot in your spare time. No, I'm not a hobby. A, I have to make that clear. I'm not a pilot. Oh, I just pay a stupid amount of money <laughs> to go and fly to jets with a, a person who is actually a pilot. Oh, okay. And, okay. And, and they take me up to a place where I'm out of control to airspace. Okay. And then they just go, enjoy it. And they take their hands off the, of everything. And I just get to fly it around like it's a go-kart. It's, it's basically like a little thing I learned when I came to America. I'm like, what? I can, like, it's like a life hack. Like, you mean, imagine just when I heard this. It yeah. came up, you mean if I can fly a fighter jet? No, I don't have a pilot's license. Yeah, you can. You just have to pay. Wait, no, you're tricking me. You can fly a fighter jet. <laughs> There's a catch here. When? Today. All right, I mean, boom. And then I got addicted and it's like gambling. Oh, How I'm, often do you go? Oh, but I, I don't want people to get mad at me, but let's just say it's not a good idea. I, I, too much. Too much? Yeah. Okay. The so company's you- called MIGFLUG. Represent MIGFLUG. <laughs> they're, they're badass. And if MIGFLUG is watching, 
can I fly the uh, the fulcrum, please? Because I want to go supersonic, and you guys have not hit me back yet on Instagram. I'm kind of pissed about it because I've been flying your your albatross for a while now, and it's a cool jet, but it's not as fast. And I like, come on, give me the fulcrum. Thank you. Let's go. You're welcome. Do you believe in aliens? Um, Are they real? That's a weird question. Is life is is intelligent life? It's highly, it's highly likely. Or I'd prefer to say it's almost certain that okay. intelligent life exists in our universe. Think about this. Think about this. Our little planet has life. We think that's cool. A lot of people don't understand how far a light year is. Right. So I'll try to, I'll, I'll mansplain this one. So uh, it's, it's <laughs> speed of light has a constant and it is the amount of time it takes for light to travel. So like in one year, light will get this far. Right. Now, people don't comprehend how big our solar system is. So like when you see those little like scales in school and you're like, oh, cool, like there's like, Neptune and Venus and like I think I understand it there's Uranus <laughs> ah, gotcha um, you see these scales and you think like the you know the the solar system is this big but at the end of the day if you actually had it to scale you mm. would have to have a marble in a desert the sun would be like let's say I'm holding a tennis ball earth would be like a marble and it would be miles away so that's just our solar system that doesn't even get close to the galaxy. Then we have the Milky Way. And then in just our Milky Way, we have a hundred billion stars. And so that's that's crazy. Yeah, that's a so, lot. so what we call the sun. <laughs> it's a lot. What we call the sun is like our sun, right? Right. So, but there's just a hundred billion of them going on in our Milky Way. But guess what? Our Milky, our Milky Way is basic because there's a hundred billion other galaxies out there that we know of. So that we know it's of. stupid to think that there couldn't be aliens. Like, come on, maybe they're long gone, or maybe they're like, like maybe our times just, in history just, just didn't just, line just, up to where like, they it's like just dumb to think there isn't. So man. like maybe the aliens are the ones that came and like shot some fire shit down on Earth and killed all the dinosaurs. Well, there's the idea of like um, I'm gonna get this word wrong, and I'm sure the science people will correct me, but I think it's uh. <laughs> it sounds such a, like a weird word. I think it's transpermia, or but basically it's like if a comet had bacteria on it and hit Earth, ah. that could have started life on Earth. But interesting. What what's cool is that like if there is alien life, we probably wouldn't recognize it because our our circumstance, like when we when we go looking for life. On other planets, we're looking for things like us, bipeds, right. animals, fish, whatever, right? But that's because we evolved on Earth. What if their evolving they circumstances have, were way different? What if their planet, which is our star, or whatever it is, but let's say planet, safer choice, has a way bigger mass, so gravity has changed. What if it's a gas planet? Like, what, what if it's what if it's like, and they can like. So, contend with those gases and still live in it. So we wouldn't even be able to identify them or as comprehend life. it. Yeah. We wouldn't even be able to like. So we might be just be look, looking in all the wrong places. Or maybe we are the aliens. Maybe like Elon Musk is leading us to be the aliens that are going to be the ones searching other planets, and they're looking for us. Uh, I feel like I disagree with you. Okay. Because. Like when you, did you go for like a walk today outside? Yeah, small walk, short walk. Yeah. So did you ever consider that you might've stepped on an ant? I could have. There you could have. Good possibility. But did you think about it at the time? I didn't. No. Why? It's, it wasn't It doesn't matter to you. thought, yeah. You're way smarter. Okay. You're way more intellectual. Okay. You're a human being, you've evolved a lot further. So if there is alien life that happens to have the technology to travel light years, would it really give a shit about us? Come on. That's true. Like, why they would probably, it care? Right. Is it so going to watch outside in our bush and go like, 
Oh, that's hot. Well, so the idea <laughs> that they need our resources, like Earth's resources, if they can travel light years, you would think that they're way past the idea of needing any of the resources that we have on Earth. Like they don't need oil to power a rocket ship that goes right. light years. And if they can travel that far, they could just get their they can get their resources from anything. And I think like um there's something I'm gonna I'm boring everybody right now. Sorry guys. <laughs> this is like meant to be a music thing, and somehow I've gotten into aliens. You start you started it. <laughs> but <clears throat> I will end it. <laughs> and then the thing is, if you have the technology to travel light years, uh or, or to travel between galaxies. You're not gonna give a shit about humans. Right. And also that means that they have also defeated what and you have to Google this because I'm not gonna try to explain it. It's called it's called the the Great Ladder or the some people say this is the Fermi paradox. But the idea that like if we are alone in, in the universe, it, it's kind of scary because it means that other civilizations have wiped themselves out. Like there's a certain point at which, like let's say, civil war breaks out and we launch nukes and oh my god, so there's that that could happen. But there's also the possibility, which I think is more likely, is that there are aliens, but like they're so ahead of it, they wouldn't care to visit us. Like like we, yeah. which leads to the next thought, which is the only reason they'd really care is if we're in a simulation. And they were like watching what was going on in that simulation. Or they had some. Think about this for a second. Am I, am I ruining your podcast? Not at all. This is okay. amazing. Love this. So, so think about this for a second, dude. The shit that, like, let's say. So, like, the dif the difference in DNA between a human being, and our common ancestor, is. 1%. And I could be wrong here, but feel free to correct me in the comments. But it's 1%, the difference between us and our common ancestor. Now, just in, and, and think about this, our common ancestor can't draw, doesn't try to, can use tools. We built the Hubble telescope. Right. Okay. So try to imagine for a 1% second. 1% more. Try to imagine. Yeah. One percent more. If even if it was four percent more, that would mean that the the kids of this species, race, this whatever. species, their the things they do for school when they're growing up are like better than the Hubble telescope. Yeah. They're, they're like they're just like, hey, hey, dad, check this out. I just built like a a time warp machine that just eats up suns, and <laughs> and dad's like, dude, that's basic. Like, come on, man. Like that, that's the difference. And, and I know that sounds very silly, but if you think about it, it's true. We're talking about on our planet, we have a 1% difference in DNA code. Imagine a 4% difference. We would be effed. They, yeah. they wouldn't care about us. We'd be useless. And that's why Elon rocks because he understands this stuff. And he's just like, before we just fuck it up for everyone, get us to the next planet, please. I can only go so far in my lifetime. Like get us, get us to Mars, man. I just want to see that happen. What do you think about the people who are saying that we're we're pursuing living on another planet while this like we're people are saying that we're abandoning our own planet in search of a different planet that we can go and destroy? I think okay. You want me to clarify that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had this argument before. So I, think, I mean, if you have the technology to populate another planet, how is that any different to like finding an island and putting some houses there? Touche. Fair it's enough. Just like, duh. Yeah. Like, oh, the, there's another planet. It's empty. No one's on it. Let's just nuke the poles. This this is Elon speaking here. Okay. Through me. Because <laughs> well, I, I always wondered about like I always wondered about how you would uh, make a make Mars like a place that humans could survive on. Right. And the, or like want the funniest to. thing he ever said, but what's crazy about him is he's so, he's so deadly like, smart. Like he plays it off like, but he's so sharp. And he goes, well, there's a difficult way and there's an easy way. And I can't remember who interviewed him, but he said, what's the difficult, what's the easy way? And he goes, nuke the pulse. And he just sounded like this villain. And, but it makes perfect sense because you have this planet that, 
has like it's not habitable for humans. Right. You nuke the poles. Okay. To like drop nukes there, which sounds super bad. It does. It doesn't sound like it's good for anyone. But what happens is it heats up the planet to be at a temperature in which we can live and then terraform it and then boom, puts a life there. At least then we have two Earths. Well, we could rename Mars. People do okay. Earth two. Yeah, I mean, just welcome to E two. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Earth two. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Earth two, baby. We live on the blockchain. The two point Yeah. Yeah. And then let someone else launch some shit to a different place. Well, Let's there's. Get out of here, man. This place sucks. Have you ever seen the movie Snowpiercer? No. Okay, so it's literally a movie about the opposite thing. So you're saying nuke the poles on Mars, it'll heat it up, and then I'm make it livable. Right, I'm but that's the concept. I'm that's saying, the concept. I'm just saying that right. Elon suggested it, and at first I laughed, and then I was like, "That's actually pretty cool." So it's a quick way. To, it's a quick way to make it suitable for human life. So Snowpiercer takes the opposite kind of idea. It says that there were, uh, you know, as the global warming was getting to an all-time high and it was becoming unlivable for humans, um, they went and took fighter pilot jets or whatever different planes. I'm not very aviation friendly. Um, they took planes and they dispersed some gas into the atmosphere that would shield the earth from the heat of the sun. But the whole point of the movie is that that went wrong and the earth got too cold and everything froze over and the only people who could live were Classic living on a train era. that was running around. Um, but yeah, so why not just do that instead? Why not like figure out a way to shield the earth from the hot sun so that way we can make this suitable for living for us again longer? I think Elon's got a lag. I think we've messed up the earth. Okay. Start, it's, it's sad to say this, but we've messed it up. Right. It, it's not going well. Come on. Everyone watching, I think we tried. <laughs> the Earth is not, like, it's, it's got some beautiful places, don't get me wrong, but we're breaking it. Elon's at least going, let's try again on a new spot. He's like, let's put our, turn our efforts towards yeah. like going elsewhere. And also, it's smart because if a comet hits us, it's just like a digital dinosaur and wipe them all out. Right. At least we have population elsewhere, yeah, living on least, as humans. At least civilization continues. Right. Human life continues. Right. Do you want to talk about something that's not aliens? Uh, let's talk about... Um, I, are you I'm living sorry. in LA right now? Yeah. You're living in Los Angeles? Yeah. Where else have you lived? Other than Los Angeles and in Australia. Well, just those two places. But okay. Um, what's really weird is when you... To uh, like in some of my biggest years when I did like 150 shows, that's like half the year for right. hotel rooms. So I haven't lived permanently in a lot of places, but it got to the point where I would select hotels and say to my agent, I only want to stay at W. And it's not because I was trying to be a diva, it's because the hotel room was the set, they think they have consistency. Oh, it felt like, okay. So, like, you get off the jet, you just spend seven hours, you're tired, you just want to go to bed, and then the show's coming up, and if you have, like, too many changes, it just messes with you, whereas if, like, a hotel keeps its consistency, like W, then, you know, like, you kind of can trick yourself into thinking you're just in the same place. That's interesting. I've never thought about that before. Yeah. I've never thought about that before. Do you get time to, like, go out in the cities and explore and... Sometimes. But not enough. A lot of people think I'm really worldly because I've traveled around the entire planet. Right. But no, I'm not. Like, I've seen a lot of airports, a lot of annoying drivers, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cool hotels, um, and a lot of nightclubs, and a lot of festivals. But I do miss out. It's, I think, a big misconception is that people think I would be like, oh, wow, he's been to, you know, you name it. Yeah. They, they, then they picture the coolest thing about that place. But I never got to see the cool thing. I didn't even, I, I went to Paris, I didn't see the Eiffel Tower. Because you were just too busy? You just had Because they just drive me straight from the airport to the hotel. And they go, you play your show now and you just get out. Hmm. You didn't see it. So like people are like, oh, you've been to Paris, wow, you must be so worldly. Uh, and I assume you've got tour dates like stacked on top of each other. So you don't really. Well, I mean, prior, <laughs> right? In the past? Y yeah. So you just don't have time. You just can't, like, you have to go to your well, next city, right? Yeah, you have to, like, fit in the, the it's got to fit in the schedule. And especially if you do, like, day parties and pool parties as well. Mm. So then you go, like, 
that's an extra thing. I didn't even think about that they either. Stop in and do a day show and then get another flight and do the night show. And then they'll have you finish at 4 a.m. And they're like, that's cool, you check out at 9. But you don't even get to check out at 9 because your flight's at 7. So you just go straight from the club to the plane. And if you're flying economy, and it, this is another diva thing, right? but your best sleep you're going to get on a 30-day tour is this. Right, on the plane. And, and you're just like, ah, oh, why is my neck hurting me? Like, this is terrible. And it's even worse. I'll tell you a funny story. I was on this flight. Okay. And then this dude, <laughs> this, I woke up in like one of those, have you ever had like a, like a, what's it called? Like a terror, like a nightmare. nightmare and you just like, yeah. yeah. Woke, Jolt awake. I woke up going, ah! And this guy next to me goes, what's wrong? And I went, where are we flying? And he goes, what? He couldn't comprehend that I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> like for him, he's just booked a flat somewhere. Like, You're right. Like where, like what city? And he thought I was nuts. <laughs> Maybe I was. Anyway, like, where were you going? Do you and, remember and where you were going? It was really sad because I, for a second, thought I was flying back to Australia. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go see my cat. Oh. I'm going to see my family. And he's like, no, you're headed to Dubai. Oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> but doesn't, nothing can survive or make shows. It's just that moment of like, you think you're going to get some sort of a. Arrest. Yeah. And and then so, the dude's like, no, you're actually out of here. Cool. All right. So Thanks, man. Let's I'm gonna fall asleep on your shoulder again. Let's double back to the stress that we started out with at the beginning. Yeah, this, Was that more stressful or is what you're dealing with now more stressful? Ooh. I don't know if I can answer that the right way because what I've learned from this year is that all the things that I took for granted I just ripped away from me. And now I just, I can't wait till I can play to a hundred people. That was like me when I was 15. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I played to 50,000 people. So like now it's, it's just been ripped away. So I think I'm stressed, but also I've got a huge sense of gratitude that I think um, if we have some silver lining here, this year was about, you know, it's not about anything, but the silver lining is it's a time to process what really was cool and what was badass. And, and what, for me, like, if a hotel, and I'm, I'm going to say this live, I would get upset sometimes if a hotel didn't have 24 hour room service. Because at the end of the show, you're hungry and yeah. you can't get food for any of you know where you are. Right. So I would need the hotel to have that. Now I'm like, I would just take, like, I'd, I'd sleep in a hammock. Little crap. Yeah. Like, what, what was I thinking? I was so, like, my ego. Idiot. Stupid Tyson. You realize how much you valued those shows and being around people yeah. and the energy. And so, like... it's, so the silver lining is it's been a good reset. I can't answer if I'm more stressed now or if I was more stressed then because I think I'm just always stressed. So this is just a perpetual thing. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much always stressed. <laughs> yeah, I have to just like run to different rooms and meditate for a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did that this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Got a good quick headspace meditation in? Yeah, just lay down in the room on my chest. Well, 10, 15 minutes? I'll do unwind. <laughs> <laughs> is it helping? It is. Yeah. It That's does good. work. I, at, at first, I paid for this, and I was like, I don't need someone to tell me how to breathe. Some dude's getting yeah. to breathe in and breathe out, and that's going to get like that. But I don't know if this dude's like some sort of superhero, but <laughs> when you listen to him, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. That's and, awesome. And, and and you do find yourself in, seri in all seriousness. Yeah. You do find yourself forgetting about the Enough boring stuff for me. Why are you interested in talking to me? Why interview you? You're actually really interesting. The fact that you think you're boring is, is interesting too, actually. That's like an interesting point in the in the fact that you're interesting. Because even the first conversation we had, that was like I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah, when we were on Zoom, I was like, I have no, no Yeah, for real. I was like, I have no clue what I'm getting myself into. But that was also a good chance. Like, I'm glad that happened because now we can get this conversation out. 
I don't have to ask you all the boring, like, what's your story shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, now we can talk about this kind of stuff, like who you really are outside of your music, outside of your career. The answer is I'm a nobody. I'm just like, there's no one's more special than anyone else. I'm just a dude who made music and got, like, it worked out musically, but I'm not like any more special than anyone else. And that's it. I'm just like, my manager is amazing. He killed it at baseball. I don't even know how that works. As far as I know, you use a stick and a ball and, and sweep. The ball went that way. You win. Cool. That's all I know. But what I'm saying is, I'm just a dude who did music and it worked. And, and my manager is an insanely cool person and he plays baseball. But I don't need to know about baseball and he doesn't really need to know about like what I'm doing in the studio. I think at the end of the day, we're all just humans and we just need to understand that we're all just trying. And we're going to be con- like the biggest mistake anyone can make is to think that they've made it. That's, mm. that's a huge flaw in like, humanity, just being like, a person. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. He's a, I don't know, is it net worth? But He's like 100 billion something, I don't know. 100, whatever. Right. Like enough for cent- eons. Yeah. Centuries. Quite right? literally, right. He's still at work. Yeah. What are you doing, Mark? Sell it. Just move on, man. Sit on a boat, lay in a hammock, and your life. But he's still at work. I think some people are just addicted to progress or like addicted to like making things. Yeah, but what point are you sacrificing joy for that addiction? It's You're not always... sacrificing joy if that addiction brings you joy. Like to say, to, I, I guess it's just, I guess it's not fair to call it an addiction because some people genuinely just find their joy in the act of creating things or in the act of progress or in the act Which of Which I do, don't get me wrong. Right. My joy is in making music. Exactly. So then the value to you isn't the fact that you've made it what or if, you've done this stuff. It's just yeah. the fact that you enjoy it. I don't think there'll ever be a day where I think I've made it. Yeah. In fact, I think most days I'm like, I haven't made it. Haven't you've had a number it. one dance airplay song. You've traveled yeah, all around. You've played to 50,000 people. None of those moments yeah, but, were moments where you were like, I made it. But get this, Calvin Harris is a pop star. Where did you draw the line? Where are you happy? Right. The point is, I'm not in it for, like, I'm not in it to try to be like, this is a point, and this is where I've made it. I've, I've come to the understanding lately, and this is a moment, that there is a point to finish you've made it. And even if you are the Mark Zuckerberg or the, or the Elon Musk of your game, you're still going to look at Warren Buffett or, or you're still going to look at someone else and you're going to go like, well, they're killing it here and you'll never be satisfied. The only way you can be happy is to just remember that what you do and what you write and what you create and what you just do in life makes some people happy. And just don't, I'm going to swear here, just don't fuck people along the way. Yeah. That's it. Super yeah. simple. Yeah. And try to find something that you love, find your joy, do it. Sure, you're gonna embarrass yourself all the time. That's me. But just Likewise. Don't, don't fuck people up along the way and do not have a good ride because maybe you've never made it, never will make it, and no one has made it, and there's no definition of making it. Done. I love that. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. Well, we can drop the mic right there. There are three cameras right in front of you, <laughs> and there are, I'm sure, things going on in your life that you'd like to tell the people about. So we're gonna wrap this up. Let you. What's that? I'm gonna. We're gonna wrap it up, and I'm gonna let you plug, let you plug and talk about whatever is going on in your life that you want to let people know about. Um, <laughs> lame ending. Lame ending. <laughs> you mic dropped, and then we literally mic dropped. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> Got a brand new song out today. It's called "Way Too Loud," and I'm pretty stoked because Naz Tokyo has. Uh, well, she's Grammy nominated, and she's just a really cool girl, and. I'm lucky she wanted to work with me and we have a song out and I think if I checked my phone, which is somewhere, uh, it, it has like 10,000 streams today. So, um, but again, why am I checking the streams? What does it matter? I'm just doing the songs out. I hope you like it. Enjoy it. And if you don't, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that was episode or second episode with Tidy. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for the conversation, man. Peace out. Um, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys. Peace out.